Hello and welcome to Ember's Reading Room. Today we are continuing our ongoing saga of My Bedtime Book of Two Minute Stories, edited by Rosemary Garland, illustrated by Tony Escott and Sally Wellman. Today's stories are Charlie Centipede and Jurgen, the Little Danish Boy, both by Margaret Connor. Double header? Yay! <laughs> Charlie Centipede. Charlie Centipede had a hundred feet. That's why he was called Centipede, which means a hundred feet. Some people might find having a hundred feet useful. Not Charlie. He thought they were a nuisance. The trouble was he kept getting them wet, and then he'd have a cold. Once he had such a bad cold that he telephoned for Dr. Dormouse to come and look at him. Dr. Dormouse put Charlie's feet into a hot mustard bath. All 100 of them. There wasn't much to see of Charlie while he was in the bath, just his head poking up above the water. But Dr. Dormouse said it would do him a lot of good. Then he dried him and put him to bed. While he was in bed, he thought about his friend, Harry Horse. Now Harry never caught a cold. Perhaps it was because he wore shoes, so he never had wet feet. So as soon as he was well, he wrapped a warm scarf around his neck and off he went to the shoe shop. What size shoes would you like? asked the shopkeeper. Size 50, said Charlie. Size 50, cried the shopkeeper. I've never heard of that size. You'll need to get them specially made. Why do you want such big ones? Well, said Charlie, it's like this. I have 100 feet. Now it would be too expensive to buy 50 pairs of shoes. But if I could get one big pair of shoes, I could put 50 feet into each shoe, see? The shopkeeper was not sure about that. However, as he hadn't any big enough shoes, he offered Charlie a big pair of heavy snow boots. Charlie slipped one on, or rather he slipped into one, right to the bottom, and the shopkeeper had to lift him out with a button hook. Charlie was upset. It's no use. I shall have to get some specially made, he said, and off he went. On the way home, he met his friend Harry Horse. Harry told him he always had his shoes specially made for him by the blacksmith. So off went Charlie to ask the blacksmith to make him some shoes. I want two large shoes, he told him. Certainly, said the blacksmith. Where's your horse? I haven't a horse. They're for me, said Charlie. What? No horse? Be off with you. You're making fun of me, shouted the blacksmith. He looked so fierce that Charlie left in such a hurry that he walked straight into an enormous puddle. Of course, he caught another cold. Charlie telephoned for Dr. Dormouse. Really, Charlie, this is ridiculous. You must stop getting your feet wet, said Dr. Dormouse. How can I help it when I haven't any shoes, sneezed Charlie. Shoes? You don't need shoes. I haven't any shoes, said Dr. Dormouse. I never get my feet wet because I watch where I put them, said Dr. Dormouse. Oh, sneezed Charlie. I never thought of that. I have many questions for this story. Like, why does he get a cold when he gets his feet wet? Like, really, man? It just doesn't make any sense. It doesn't even feel like it makes sense as a children's story. What's the moral going on here? What, what's, what's going on here? Just something about this story bugs me. The art's nice, though. A very cute centipede. Then I remembered another story with what I believe is a centipede. I'm pretty sure that's a centipede. James and the Giant Peach. Mm. Got a nice little scarf on that page over there. Got the textures nicely done on the back of the centipede. A very cute face, though. Most centipedes do not have cute faces, unless you're, like, into bugs. But, yeah. And the blacksmith is well done. Very comical. This is the full-color artist again, by the way. And the tub is rendered nicely, though wouldn't a mustard bath be yellow? Or are we talking about the mustard seasoning? So, what did you think? Misremembered, I thought he actually ended up getting shoes. Hmm. But yeah, I think the whole moral is watch where you're going and be careful. Ah. Yeah, that was kind of covered up because I thought the moral was don't get your feet wet or you'll catch a cold. I never get my feet wet because I watch where I put them. So, pay attention to your surroundings. And you know that it's been a common thought that 
going out in the rain or splashing in puddles makes you sick. Not really. Of course not really, but this book is how old and it's still common even now. You must remember this book was not published recently. You know, it was published uh, Eurobook Limited 1969. Mm. And this copy is the U.S. 1981 printing. Mm. So, you know, we're talking a good 50 plus years ago. Shall we continue? Mm -hmm. Jurgen, the little Danish boy. Jurgen was a little Danish boy who lived in the beautiful city of Copenhagen. His favorite game was to sit on the grass with his mother beside the statue of the pretty Copenhagen mermaid and count all the big ships as they sailed into the harbor. The big ships always made him feel excited. They came from many parts of the world, some of them from places with names difficult to say. Jurgen said when he grew up he would be a sailor. His daddy was a sailor, and when he came home he told Jurgen wonderful stories about the sea. The story Jurgen loved best was about the Vikings, who sailed from Denmark many years ago to seek new lands. When daddy wasn't there to tell it to him, he and mother would tell it to each other. They were big, fierce-looking men with red beards, said Jurgen, but they were brave to sail all across the sea in wooden boats with only sails to take them along. When there wasn't any wind to blow them along, they had to row with oars, said Mother. Their boats were like this toy one of mine, said Jurgen. They were called long boats and sometimes dragon boats. I like that name best. It makes them sound fierce. The Vikings wore helmets with horns sticking out each side, and they carried shields and spears to fight their enemies. I wish I were a Viking. But you can't swim, said Mother. Vikings must be able to swim. Jurgen wanted to learn to swim, really. It was just he was afraid to go too far into the water. But Mother said he'd never learned to swim in shallow water. You must go in far enough to get your feet off the bottom, she said. Then one day something happened which made him go further into the water. A little girl lost her beach ball. She was very upset as it floated away from her. Jurgen watched it float past him, and suddenly he decided to rescue it for her. So he waded in after it and caught it. But then a big wave knocked him off his feet. He didn't let go of the ball. He clung on tightly and splashed about with his feet. Then Mother came and helped him up. I will take the ball and help you swim back to shore, she said. And he did. Brave boy, cried the little girl's mother. And the little girl said, Please, can I come and learn to swim with you? Suddenly Jurgen felt he really wanted to learn to swim. So he said, Yes, of course you can. Mother taught them both to swim together. The next time Daddy came home, he was very pleased to hear that Jurgen could swim. Now you can be a real sailor when you grow up, he said. But Jurgen still wished he could be a Viking. So Daddy bought him a Viking helmet with horns sticking out each side. Now you look like a real Viking, he said. Jurgen felt very proud when he put it on. He wore it when Daddy took him and Mother to look over his ship. Hello, said the captain. Are you a friendly Viking? Yes, said Jurgen. I'm glad, joked the captain. I wouldn't like to have to throw you overboard. It wouldn't matter if you did. I can swim now, laughed Jurgen. Common misconception. Vikings actually never wore the pointed helmets. You know, the ones with the horns. We're not quite sure where that came from. But most Vikings, nope. I mean, it's actually impractical for battle. That's the real big catcher right there. And Vikings were actually very practical in battle. They used a lot of smart tactics. This is one of the reasons they conquered so much on their own. And they were big explorers. I mean, there's even evidence that they actually made it to America way before anyone else. Except for maybe where Native Americans came from. And even then, it's questionable. And now on to the art. A very nice mermaid. Drawn very nicely. Shaded in such a nice way to really give depth and texture. And... There's a nice illustration of the boy going out after the ball for the little girl who's near the shore and Jurgen mm -hmm. is swimming out to get the ball. And then we have the little toy boat on that. I'm pretty sure that's the one they were talking about in the story. And then we have Jurgen and I'm assuming his father or the captain. I'm going to say captain. 
I'm thinking the captain, based on the hat and the stripes on the shoulders. Asking him whether or not he's a friendly Viking. That really depends on if the Viking liked you or not. The Tale of the Tortoise Though my age is 109, and my voice is rather a croak, trying to be on time, I'm afraid is a bit of a joke. If you'd like to help out and avoid my being late, I'm sorry I'll have to shout, will you lend me your roller skates? Cute tortoise. Yeah, a tortoise on a roller skates would be kind of like Flash from Zootopia. Yeah, could they actually move along, or would you just put one on and kind of push them? And it's a very cute tortoise. The face isn't that realistic, though. It's more of a cartoony face, but the rest of the body is more of a realistic style. And the roller skates are very realistically done. Very nicely detailed, very classic roller skates. Well, consider the timing of when this was... I'm just giving people an accurate description of what I see. Because this was way before rollerblades. And way before, apparently, the ones where the boot is already built in. Because this is just the base. You would actually strap your foot with a shoe already on it into these. Yeah, so what were your thoughts overall of the story and the poem? <laughs> It's interesting to do two in a row by the same author. Mm. Is they're two very different stories. But it's kind of interesting where this goes because we have several things. He wants to be a sailor, he wants to be a Viking, and he wants to learn how to swim. That's a lot for a two page spread. Yeah, that is a lot to pin into a two page spread, especially with a little details that they tried to squeeze in about him and being a Danish boy and Vikings and stuff like that. Well, after like the first paragraph, that doesn't really seem to be relevant that he is Danish and lives in Copenhagen. I think that's more to emphasize the thing about the Vikings, because he's maybe trying to be proud of his culture. Mm, I don't know. Were Vikings from the Danish area? Mm, pretty sure not. Yeah, I don't know why I'm picking Sweden. Probably because of the bad accents that a lot of people do. For Vikings, yeah. Alright. This has been another installment of My Bedtime Book of Two Minute Stories. Today's stories were Charlie Centipede and Jurgen the Little Danish Boy. Both by Margaret Connor. Thank you for listening. Like, subscribe, share, comment. Check out the rest of the playlist if you haven't been following along. I know some of you have been following along. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> there are other playlists of other books, also other playlists on the main channel. So you have children's books, you have pulp culture, you have the artwork from the books, and you have Lux Drawing Pretty Pictures. So a lot to choose from. Haven't picked the book up yet? Check for the Amazon link. Just feel like going shopping? Grab the Ebates link. Amazon and Ebates are not sponsors of or in any way affiliated with Ember's Reading Room or any content of the Lux Analysis channel. Thank you.